Hello, hello. Uh, welcome, welcome, and welcome. Good day to you wherever you may be um, watching us. We're so excited that you finally you're joining us um, today. Um, the episode today is the last episode in the series of decolonizing dramaturgy theater makers uh, from Africa in conversation. Uh, my name is Taiwo Wafolabi. I'm the curator uh, of this series. Uh, I'm an assistant professor at the University of Regina. Um, I'm a Canada researcher in socially engaged uh, theater and a director of the Center for Socially Engaged Theater. Um, and uh, I have connection uh, with Theater Emission International in Nigeria. Uh, and really excited to be um, on this journey with uh, amazing partners such as HowlRound, um, Safe World uh, in Canada, Pan African Creative Exchange, uh, Theatre Emissary International in Nigeria, uh, and of course, uh, University of Regina. The series has been really amazing. Um, the first episode, we started by really situating a discourse around decolonizing dramaturgy. And we, um, we came to that idea that the notion of dramaturgy in terms of defining it as a terminology can be quite contentious because it's, it's slippery to use uh, Donald Malusi's word. Uh, and he's gonna talk at some point today. Um, and that's because depending on where you are practicing, uh, the time that you are practicing, the period in which you're practicing, the, the theater and performance tradition that you're practicing in determines so many things about how you conceptualize and envision and talk about dramaturgy. However, we did settle on something. As the dramaturgy, we see it as the logic of performance. We also um, went to, to, to query the question, why decolonize dramaturgy? And, and we identify the need to talk about the political, the aesthetic, the cultural, and the human component of performance itself. And that hopefully the idea of decolonizing dramaturgy can give us platform and opportunity to speak and discuss big ideas such as power, colonization, uh, capitalism, representation, ethics, and different things like that. The second episode also went into talking about dramaturgical skills from Egypt, Nigeria, uh, 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 and Zimbabwe. Uh, the third episode also uh, focused on self-dramaturg and dramaturging others. And we had experts and practitioners from the UK, uh, from Nigeria, uh, and from Uganda. And of course, last week we had Karishma Bangani uh, and the Charles uh, uh, Tia Benogo from Burkina Faso, really discussing dramaturgy and dramaturgical skills and what does that mean within the context of their own work. Today, I'm really amazed and really privileged to have three theater practitioners, um, dramaturgs, directors, playwrights, theater uh, stage manager in our midst uh, to round up this, epi this web series for us. Um, the three of them, they've traveled far and wide. Their, work, their works have been told, um, been taken on tour different part of the world. And so it's my privilege and really an honor to have Donald Malosi with us. Ibukun Fasson, Donald Malosi from Botswana uh, and the UK, um, Ibukun from Nigeria and Princess Malongo from South Africa. Uh, I will, uh, my first question to them, um, and they take it in turn, is to really introduce themselves in, in the capacity and their connection to dramaturgy and what that mean for them within the context of their own work. So ask uh, Princess Malongo, do you wanna start? Uh, take, take it away, please. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tyro. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, such an honor to, to be part of this amazing discussion. I caught uh, quite a few of the chats before, and it's been really interesting to hear all the different views. And I think for me, um, I've been a, a theatre director for many years um, um, and then went into producing my own work and also working with 
different uh, creatives from South Africa uh, in various ways. And one particular way has been uh, running an independent space for artists by artists, just providing a platform where um, um, people can tell their stories. And I think for me, uh, I found a huge gap that is particularly in South Africa. Um, when I started as a director, you sort of, in a way, I don't want to say dictated, but in a way um, guided towards, you know, telling stories that uh, bring forth our history. Uh, our history is really rooted in, in, in our theater. And you'll find that a lot of the conventional spaces needed to retell those stories. So when you come as a new director, female, you sort of test it uh, in that way. So my experience with uh, dramaturgy and working with one wasn't necessarily termed as a dramaturgy person, but mostly you'd have a mentor who'd come in and guide, you know, on this work or, or this text that has, you know, been around for so many years. Uh, my first production was And the Girls in Their Sunday Dresses, which was written by Zex and Dam. And here I am, um, you know, coming across the script and needing to honor the history that comes with it, you know. So I found working with someone um, to this regard, you know, very beneficiary in how I told the, the honesty of the work. Um, and moving on into becoming independent as um, a director, as a producer and wanting to, to write my own work, this is where I felt that the, um, it was a bit outdated or disconnected the process of having a dramaturg uh, uh, in your beginning process um, because you are young and, you know, needing to explore how you as a, a new director tell your own stories. What is that? You know, who do you engage with in um, discovering that? Um, so, uh, I think it, with my own work, I needed to work with, uh, um, the work was basically commissioned by Austria, which required me to then work with someone from a different cultural background. And how do you find the meeting ground to, you know, uh, tell my people's story, which is my story, uh, with someone across the world um, and, and finding that meeting point and, you know, the disadvantages of it and the advantages of just having someone from somewhere else opening up my mind as a South African creative who hasn't been exposed to other ways and means of working. So I was able to use, you know, uh, uh, that process to inform my work, but also giving me the freedom to do something that's not done in my own hometown. So I think for me, this is how I, I, I understand the process and engaging with a person or a, a, a process um, that informs the work, new work, specifically new work that you are creating um, in your current time. So I will pass it on to Donald. Uh, thank you. Um, my name is Donald Mulusi. I am from Botswana and I'm an actor and writer. Uh, in my work as an actor, um, I this year I have 20 years of professional uh, stage performance uh, to my name, uh, which is why I'm also thinking of uh, trying out other media. You know, it means that my dramaturgy is going to change uh, in, a, in the coming couple of years. Um, and as an actor, obviously, I've been dramaturged by other people when I was off Broadway and on Broadway, uh, and also when I was performing around the African continent, uh, the market theater. Um, but I also got to perform my own original work on those stages, which meant I was also dramaturging as well. So I think the dynamic between being dramaturged and dramaturging yourself uh, is something that I'll probably touch on later on. Um, and then as a writer, I write dramatic literature plays uh, and I also write fiction. Again, you have these two different ways of writing that are about curating a story and experience uh, in conversation with history. So I've had to sort of realize that as much as I'm writing something that I wanna sort of have freedom over, I also want to, I'm also aware that I'm writing about a history of a people who've never had their history written. So there's a diligence that came with my dramaturgy in that, uh, in that sense. Thank you. And I'll pass it on to Iwukun, yes, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ibukun Pastor. 
I'm a playwright, I'm a stage manager, I'm a director, and I'm a producer. Um, so yeah, uh, my connection to dramaturgy you know, is on different levels, uh, on directed stage management, producing and playwright. Um, so um, I, in terms of dramaturgy, it's, it's not really been a formal thing to me, but, but uh, in, my, in my experience as a director, you know, I've always invited people, you know, to after, um, after uh, block my play or showing my dress and set or something like that to, to, to help me look at the play, to, to dissect it. So I, I invite people from three, I think three or two different levels, from people that are theater inclined, people that are culturally inclined, people that don't know anything about it and just want to come and see the play. So I, I bring them on board to tell me, what do you feel about this play? You know, and although before that I always invite, I always um, do my research, I go to people and everything. So um, the dramaturgy to me is, uh, in terms of, it's not institutionalized, institutionalized in a way, because I have people, I have people that I consult that, that are not necessarily learned, you know. So again, in terms of stage management, I've, I've worked in, in so many plays, directors and everything, that we dissect the whole play. What do the audience want? And is this is this play interesting? Is it not interesting? Is it is it uh, uh, is it is it going to really pass across the message we we would uh, we want to be passed? And in terms of producing, uh, I produced uh, I, I was the associate producer of Lagos Theatre Festival for three years. I think that was around 2016 to 18. I was a producer of Lagos Theatre Festival in 2019. So my my dramaturgy there has in a passive one, you know, where I, I have conversations with the producers, producers in the in the festival, in the festival one on one. How, how can we, you know, I know that you directed your play, you know, so this is now in our space. So how do we make it work? And this is what I feel. I, I tell them, you know, this is what I feel has been working so far. You know, so so what do we? How how, how do we make this thing much more interesting? And for example, for some plays. That uh, if I if I gauge audience experience, you know, for maybe the first performance of the play, I go to maybe the producer the next time. You know, so this is it. You know, do you think we can work like this? And sometimes, you know, it's it's left for the producer. It's it's left for the director to either accept or not. And my, in terms of playwriting, my my uh, I've, I've always had to consult people really, <laughs> really, you know, to for, for example for my recent play. Uh, the entitlement, I, I had to consult a lot of people, especially people that go, that frequent bars a lot. You know, so it's from every process before I even start uh, constructing my lines and everything. Then even after writing, I I, I submit it to peer reviews. You know. So uh, I submit it to different, my, my friends, colleagues, professionals. Okay, read this play, let me know what it is. So some people will review it. Review the structural elements, so people review the cultural elements, so people review the political elements and everything. So yeah, so that that's just you know, and um, um, my my connection to the is on different levels. Thank you very thank, much. Th thank you, Bukun. Um, interesting because the three of you you've touched on you know interesting ideas. Uh, one being being a, a curator of 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 a, of an ex of a theatrical experience. Um, of a of a festival, um, and also being a pro, uh, being a programmer in the context of Ibukon, and also being a producer. And I know that you know, uh, Karishma did talk about producing, and hopefully we get there. Um, we, we can revisit that. But I want to come back to that idea of it seems the three of you are different levels. It's either you have you 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 um, highlighted the fact that. The idea of dramaturgy within the context of your own work uh, and your, lo your, your location, it's not necessarily institutionalized and perhaps there is no formal training for that. I think my question then to follow up on that is how have you been able to conceptualize that idea of dramaturgy, if you have, at the beginning of your work or in the middle of it? Or at the end of it, how are those? How has it been helpful for you in in your writing for Donut? I, and I, I mentioned earlier on in our previous conversation, Donut, about one of your plays, um, Montuana, um, an amazing piece, you know, um, that is very it's at the forefront of of so many 
so many discourses from post-colonial to, 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 you know, to decolonization, to speaking back to, you know, to, to, to identity and things like that, or to the entanglement in Bokon's work, um, or to Prince's work where as a director that is, you know, exploring um, stories that are of your people from your people. And I just remember one of your projects you just did that was around centered around names, right? Where you were critical, you were interested in exploring names and histories and identities and connection. How, how does this idea of dramaturgy itself, how does it help in that process, in that development process? And we, we can start with our princess now. No, we can start with Donut now, and then we'll come to Prince, uh, and we'll come to Ipokun, then to Princess. Okay. Um, for me, the the place that I, I wrote in We Are All Blue, which is a collection of my off-Broadway plays, uh, they are plays about Botswana, Botswana's history that has not been told. Uh, it does not even exist in Botswana classrooms. So I was very aware that I'm putting together, curating um, almost a history for a different generation. There are people who will encounter my work and never encounter the archives because we don't have an education system that uh, privileges our history. Uh, so when I approached uh, those plays in writing them, I was aware that I was surrogating the past and I was aware that I wanted a historian to look at my plays and give me an A+. And I still wanted a literary reviewer to also think that it was half decent. So my dramaturgical process then was more about uh, the, the diligence of uh, a lack, you know, a lack of our stories. I think if I came from a place that has told a lot of its own stories, I would even be doing satire or something like that about the past. But my engagement had to be very diligent. Um, and so I, I, I think that informed a lot of my work to a great extent. Um, and as I performed it around the world, because I wrote it and performed a lot of it, um, I was aware that I was performing it in English, you know, which of course in Botswana, it means that if I use English, I get to speak to the whole country, but it also means that I'm using a colonial language. And as we decolonize dramaturgy, I also am aware of my own positionality as an English speaking Botswana, that um, I claim English as mine, not every African will. Uh, and so my dramaturgical experience has sort of been, um, characterized by lots of questions and experiments. Um, and I really look forward to what it will evolve into uh, as I try to um, move to a different medium, which is film. Yeah. Inter interesting. Um, I I'm gonna come back to, cause I think that um, language is a very, you know, it's, it's a huge one especially for the three of you, you're walking across different continents, different cultures, and you have to always constantly look for language that connects, you know, that people can understand. And I think language is, is, that, is that, you know, it's, it's English language is something that kind of resonates to the three of you. We're gonna come back to that when we, you know, add that idea of language and other things within the context of decolonization, because I think it's really very critical. But I want to go back to Princess based on this question on, on, on that, I've, that I've rendered. Um, what are your thoughts, uh, Princess? Uh, uh, Princess, you might have to unmute. Sorry. <laughs> um, I think, Tyron, you know, for me, um, when I started writing or writing my first play, I was truly exploring just the freedom of selecting a style as a director. So I was coming from that point of view. I felt the work that, you know, that comes from our past, engaged with poor theater, and I wanted to explore a different way of telling South African stories you know, in uh, um, uh, in different styles. Um, so I was coming from that point of view. However, I was very much aware on that journey. That's my own personal journey as a director. I was much, very much aware that around me, there were so many writers with unheard stories. Um, I, I, I knew that that was happening because I went to uh, Dauro and there were files and files of scripts that uh, have not been told, you know. Um, so me providing a platform that allowed, you know, for us to be constantly, it wasn't 
you know, about structure or, you know, it wasn't about what you may get from, you know, tertiary and B, because it really wasn't about that because we weren't, we, we, we weren't exposed to that at all. So me as a theater director, I, I wasn't exposed to uh, dramaturgy and, you know, engaging with someone only when I went, you know, and started directing as a theater director because I was placed on a platform that allowed me. However, on the grassroots, there were so many writers who had scripts and never mind structure and plot, they just, you know, they've written something and what do I do now, you know? Um, so, which is why the platform became so crucial in just us engaging in how we share our stories uh, before, you know, uh, understanding how it can move to across the world or what have you. It was just about how do we share, you know, the stories that exist amongst us? How do we constantly hear and discuss and, and, and share? Um, so creating a platform allowed an environment where dramaturgy was taking place, even though we weren't aware. After someone watches a play, you know, someone, it's like, wow, I would have never thought of that if I didn't have this platform to have people talking about my work and new stories. Let me go back, rewrite, you know? So the community in a way became that movement of how do we actually dissect this new work that's coming out that may have problems according to the West and how structure and whatever means, you know, needs to be. But how about let's just make sure the work is heard. So for me, it's never mind, you know, how, but let's make sure that it lands on someone's ear for the work to continue and, and, and move on. Interest, interesting, Princess, because you're touching on that idea of community drama talking one another. And like we, we did establish, you know, very early um, in, the, in the series where we're talking about the fact that the idea of format training of dramaturg of dramaturgy mm -hmm. itself, of dramaturgs and all of that, it's an interesting one, even you know, even in the Western part of the world. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, they, there's not necessarily um, 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 that format training. And you know, uh, one of the things we said, I think it was in episode four, is is the idea, you know, posing the question that the fact that you don't, you, folks, there's no, we don't have format training. Does that still doesn't mean that it's not it's not a thing, right? You know, yeah. the fact that there is a platform where folks can, you know, your community, you know, playwright, they are helping one another, you know, asking yeah. questions historically, you know, take, going, taking their piece back to their community or to their grandfathers or parents and say, hey, I'm looking at this story, what does it mean? or somebody that has read something from archive of history to say, have you considered this, asking questions? It's, it's that, that, that idea of community drama talking in, in, within the context of the history and the ethos of the people, which is very, very interesting idea versus having just one drama talk or one person that is sitting on the walk of giving guidance and support. So, so it's an interesting piece you just touched. Now, well, of course, hopefully we're going to come back, hopefully Bukun will speak to institutional dramaturgy uh, because he's worked within institution as a person who, 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 was, who is producing a festival and all of that. But we're going to come to that idea of community dramaturgy because maybe, maybe that's something interesting that the you know a lot of theater makers and the practice and the tra tradition, the creative tradition on the mm. continent can actually offer the field of dramaturgy itself, <laughs> right? Where mm. we're not, it's not just about one person. <laughs> you know, Donald was saying that he, you know, he wants to ensure that his piece lands in the hand of a historian and says, yes, this is accurate. Mm. Lands in the hand of, and by historian, we're not just talking about somebody that acquired a PhD in history alone. We're talking about somebody that is actually from that country that has understanding mm. of the accurate understanding of that, of the history of, you know, of, of, of the people of, of that country, right? So, which is very interesting, mm. right? We're going to come, Ibukun, uh, your thought on the question, I know I'm I'm doing a lot of editorial punches here because it's the last episode, just bringing many things together. But Ibukun, we're going to hand over mm. to you your thoughts about the question, and then we come back to uh, other ideas that both Donald and Princess uh, have raised. Over oh, to you. Okay. okay. So um, in terms of dramaturgy, you know, my, my, my dramaturgy is in three different phases. Okay, I will talk about playwriting now. 
So um, before I write my play, okay, let me use uh, my recent play, Tal Gomez. And before I wrote the play, I wanted to I wanted to write a play about NSAS. And that, that's the recent police brutality in Nigeria. And uh, and before that, oh my god, sorry. And, and before that, I'd I'd always oh, I'd always wanted to also write a play about politics and everything. So while while I was uh, researching, you know, I, uh, the the answers came about, and and I was like, okay, this is a fantastic thing. And because I was not that active in the protest, you know, I it, it gave me so much issues. So the first thing I did was to go to people that really attended this protest. I interviewed a lot of people. I, I sent questionnaires, you know, what do you feel about this protest? You know, trying to, to divulge emotions, trying to divulge emotions in me from all these things. Then after that, I went, then, then after that, I started writing my play. You know, and in the process of writing my play, I, I discovered that I still didn't have, I, I still didn't have enough experience that, uh, and, and then I, I was like, okay, what, what space uh, can, 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 uh, can I physicalize this play? And, oh, and, and I've always been a lover of one man play. There's one man, two man play. And I, uh, people who know me well know that I don't like the Postillion Theater at all. So I decided, okay, I'm going to situate this performance in the bar. And if I situate the performance in the bar, I want that bar to represent several things for me. So the bar represented the church, the bar, you know, I, 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 I was telling a lot of stories. So then I, I started interviewing people again about, uh, because there was one point I wrote about Yao Yao, you know, Yao Yao, Yao in, uh, for people that don't know it, it's internet fraud, you know, about this guy. So I didn't know a lot about them. So I just, uh, I, I, I started talking to people that, that knew friends that, that were first stars in quotes, you know, and they started telling me their stories, you know, how, how they are not really into this thing because of, uh, because they really want to do it in a way, you know, our society has frustrated them and all those things. So I, I made my story quite uh, true to people that I'm representing so that I don't misrepresent anybody, you know, because I can have these ideas about these people. Then when it's on stage, people will be like, no, 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 we don't talk like that. No, this is not us, you know, you're not representing us well. And again, because of my experience, uh, stage managing and directing, you know, I uh, before the play even goes on stage, we do a lot. We bring people in to tear the play down. You know, does this character speak like someone you know out there? You know, so then I decided, okay, let me put this play on stage. So I I, I wrote the first act. You know, the, the play is in three acts, but I wrote the first act and I decided, okay, I was going to perform it at Lagos State at, at Lagos Fringe, that a festival uh, created by Kenneth Wu. So I, I decided, okay, let me do this thing. And after the first performance, I got response. And I didn't know that I wrote something really interesting. So the, the opportunity for the, for, for the the competition came in, then I started fleshing it up, you know, fleshing it up, uh, bringing in more people, interviewing. So, you know, by the time I finished the, the, the play, I had to also send it back to people. You know, I sent it to someone that goes to the buy a lot. I sent it to, a, a quote, an internet for star, <laughs> you know, let, let me look at this play, whether it, it really depicts this thing. You know? And I sent it to my friends, I sent it to the people in the academia, you know, let me look at the structure, you know, is the structure nice, you know. I sent it to um, my lecturer, you know, I sent it to just several people to just look at it before I submit it. So, you know, dra 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 dramaturgy is on different, different levels. And I feel that, you know, it's not, Someone doesn't need to be that educated before it becomes a dramaturg. And there are some people that even that, that are in the position of drama and that are that act in the position of dramaturg and they don't even know that, 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 that they, they are dramaturgs at all. You know, it's street, it's out. There was one time I was uh, writing a play and I, it, it out was my dramaturg. <laughs> it, it's street touching. So it, it's so funny how dramaturgy and the definition of dramaturgy play there are different levels. Different and Thank you. Thank you, Bukoy. Interesting how you're really touching the idea of outsourcing and finding and looking for the resources around you and tapping into that for those that can guide you through that process. Um, uh, quite interesting because um, also kind of maybe speaks to 
the idea of the collective that, that a lot of our community or society within the context of African culture really think about. Um, and and, and uh, it, that, that's really, even though there is no one person that you could term as, you know, as giving you that dramaturgical, le- uh, you know, support, you were able to garner support from multiple levels of interactions and people and all of that. I'm going to come to my, um, to, to Donald with this question because you've written you've written a lot of plays and 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 your play plays have you know they are award winning plays and and really really proud of you uh, for, for 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 offering us amazing piece that uh, um that have taken center stage you know on Broadway and off Broadway uh, but before I ask you my question Donald I just wanted to our viewers. Um, if you have questions or provocations or thoughts or ideas, please just use the chat box. Uh, um, our co-producer Brendan will ensure that we get the resp- uh, we get your question ideas to attend to them. Um, uh, it, we we encourage the interaction as we as we as we as we you know as we move forward. So, Donna, do you want to talk about your own dramaturgical process? Or how has the dramaturgical skills help you in your in your work? Um, I know that we've we, it seems the three of you have sort of in, inferred in different ways that you n- do not necessarily subscribe to having one person as a dramaturg. Rather, you 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 research by yourself, you self dramaturg. And also you sort of use that hybrid model of self-dramaturgy and at the same time finding outsourcing it, the process of asking questions, checking the logic of the performance, research and all of that, outsourcing it also to people around you that can in your network. What's your process um, as a playwright now, Donald? And I'm going to come to Princess as a, as a director. What's your own process? But let's start with Donald first. What's your process? What does it look like? Yes, thank you. Um, uh, you know, it differs from project to project because I find that um, I need to be so aware of my positionality every single time. For example, my first play that was uh, off Broadway was Today It's Me, which is a Ugandan play about the first um, public uh, figure uh, in Africa to declare that he was HIV positive in 1988. So. He was Ugandan. I'm not Ugandan. I had to be very aware as I wrote Luganda and sang Luganda on stage of my positionality. So for that one, my process, for example, would be, you know, I I did go to Uganda, lived in Uganda, learned the language and and so on. But I just wanted to share my process for Blue, Black and White, which is my play about uh, Sorceress Dakama, Botswana's first president. Uh, That, you know, this was a story that only existed in the minds of our elders. It did not exist in the school curriculum. And so I had to go to three continents, uh, you know, to find pieces of the story, uh, to go into museums in the UK, find audio. We had never heard his voice at that point. I mean, that's just how extremely colonial it it is. I mean, I can't imagine any African country that hasn't heard the the, the voice and the speeches of its first president, but this was the case, uh, you know, 10 years ago. Um, And so I had to really do almost like historical work. And at some point I thought to myself, am I writing a play or am I writing something else? Because this seemed like a very academic exercise, (laughs) Um, but it was useful because I was able to get um, different facets of how this couple who were interracial in 1947 were perceived. Um, Once I had done that and put it on stage, the dramaturgical journey did not stop for me because I still wanted to learn how to better shape the story. So I took it on tour. Um, and the reason I perform a lot of my works over and over again, it's, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's an editing method for me, right? Every audience that speaks to me after that, I go back to my room and I write all of that down. And if that goes on for six months around the world, at the end of it, I have collaborated uh, with the, the, the feedback that's been given. And that helps me shape the story in a different um, or, or better dramatic, surgical direction. So that's kind of my approach to it, that it, it has to be collaborative. Uh, and also I have to 
first and foremost, be aware of my positionality. I cannot tell a Ugandan story and pretend like I'm a cultural insider. I have to have the same sensitivities um, as uh, a white person telling an African story. Thank you. Um, interesting, because uh, you've touched on, we're going to come, uh, after this round, we're going to come to the idea of decolonizing dramaturgy itself. And the three of you, you've touched on different things that, that I'm hoping we're going to draw from um, and really focus on, um, on, on, on you know, decolonizing dramaturgy. Um, but Donald, one of the things you said, and I think it was, it was specifically in episode two, where we were talking about the idea of, um, you know, having an external dramaturg where you're, you're taking a play to a particular place. And I think, you know, Princess also mentioned that where she had a commission from Austria and then she's walking across two cultures. And the reality exactly. is that a person coming from that part of the world may necessarily not have that cultural sensi sensibility and sensitivity um, to the story, right? So that, that's really very interesting, especially from the context of what it means that you know the, the what it means to dramaturg but then beyond that as institutional dramaturg right as an you know maybe in charge of of, of a festival that you're, you're in charge of you know curation and all of that and those are interesting ideas where you for donut you had to really do like you know thorough research uh archival research and all of that which is really interesting um um to, to your process Princess, what, what's your process? What does it look like? And, and you can feel free to, to cite any of your examples, whether from a, uh, mm. from a director's perspective or from other perspectives and positionality that you want to take. Yeah. Um, I think I'll speak of um, a, a musical that I directed and also, um, you know, formed part of the dramaturg process with the writer, um, which was an interesting position for me because I had never, I feel, been, you know, in that position where now I'm, I'm giving insight on before I, you know, have access to the work. So it was different for me as the director to be in the process of writing from the beginning stages uh, with the writer. And it was a very, I think it was a self-discovery for me and my journey as a director that this is actually how I want to tell my stories. Uh, is to work closely with someone um, because I already have a vision of, you know, what I want to see on stage and how I influenced that from the beginning was, was very crucial for me. And this particular play was uh, called Divas of Kofifi, um, which had um, at that moment living legends, Mom Tandi Klassen, Mom Dorothy Masuga, uh, and Mom Abigail. And um, two of them have since passed on. And for me, that sort of highlighted the importance of telling that story while they were still alive and extracting all that information from them that only they held, you know? Um, and that formed an important part in, in how me and the writer sort of engaged with each other on how do we handle this history? And I think I, it, it's constantly that, um, as a South African, you're constantly trying to see how you handle a history um, that now needs to, you know, needs to be told and heard. And that was a beautiful process, very different to my earlier experience of being a young director, wanting to, you know, be free and wanting to tell my own story in my own way. And I feel that Austria actually allowed me to do that. Um, so the process of the dramaturge was not necessarily to question and interrogate, you know, what I'm putting on the floor. Um, it was, it was uh, basically, uh, his role became, and what you were mentioning, Ty, of what, you know, what institution is he coming from and what responsibilities does he have to ensure that whatever's on, you know, the floor uh, um, can connect to he's representing the people from uh, uh, his culture, you know? So it was a meeting ground. And although there were, like I said, disadvantages and advantages, you constantly negotiating, which was what's different from working in the South African context of my, you know, but taking my work somewhere else where already what I'm doing is foreign, you know, um, I felt that there was respect in terms of, 
you know, honoring what I want to be told and what I felt is fit important and needs to be in the play. Um, uh, however, even prior to that, I had engaged with so many different people at home, knowing that someone else is going to come in. So I think as a director or writer, you know, you sort of also trying to find ways of protecting your work from you know uh people who may enter and may take you somewhere else so um the the community aspect of bringing people into the work has always been important and a part of my work uh from a young age to now it uh, um, and even as a dramaturg i can say that because now i think we've explained that <laughs> in a way we all are you know uh, um if you've worked on work, whether you self uh, um, uh, dramatize, uh, self being a self dramatist or, or involving other people, you know, there's, there's still a part of you that informs the work in how it moves forward, you know. So I've, I think I've, I've connected to my role as that, not solely as a director, because you also sort of taught to stay in your lane, right? It's like, wait for the script, the writer will send it to you when it's ready. But crossing and, you know, uh, um, uh, crossing those lines and having the director sooner uh, with the writer was something very special for me, which I felt took the work to a completely different direction by the time um, it's the final draft and I'm, I'm directing it, you know, there's just so much that has been put in by so many different people that there's no way that it can be um, light, it's heavy, because our history is heavy. And it, it's because it's not told, you need people to continuously add, you know, until um, whoever's making the final decision of it's enough now, you know, uh, gives the go ahead to, to pass it on to the next phase. So I think for me as a, a director, I've just enjoyed that fluidity of moving in and out of staying in my lane, but also going in and, and, and putting in my two cents to, to send it in, in the direction we wanted to go in. Interesting. Uh, the three of you kind of touching on that. I, you know, that the dramaturgy of now really acknowledge the how nuanced and complex the world we live in right now exists. The world we exist in right now, how, uh, it is that sense of that complexity and involving different people in that creative process. And that even for you, if you want to, if you want to do that research and all of that um, by yourself that you're considering and asking those critical questions um, that are really important to bring in things together. I love something that um, the three of you kind of alluded to the community again, you know, for Donut, even though you do your archival work, you do the research and you're asking all of those questions, the community become like that thought eye for you, that they guide that process and they, they inform revision upon revision. Same thing, for, same thing for Ibukon and same thing for Princess where the community again gives you that platform uh, when you outsource that, you know, that told I um, responsibility to them to ask you questions, to challenge you, to help you to refine, define, and hopefully clearly articulate what you're trying to say. Um, this question is for Ibukun, and, and then after that, we're going to flip to why decolonize dramaturgy. Uh, so I wanted to start thinking in terms of that, your, your, your key points in terms of, you know, decolonizing dramaturgy. But for Ibukun, because you've worked, you've curated um, a festival, a series of festivals, you've also produced them, you've programmed them. What does dramaturgy look like in the context of, how, of doing a festival in Nigeria, all right? Because we have to, we have to, we have to also, we have to emphasize the rule of the place, all right? And I think Donald also said that, like, you're writing a play for Ugandan, somewhat from Uganda, where you're not really Ugandan, and then you have to understand the rule of the place and history and all of that, and the the entire ethos in that place. So for you, Bukun, what does that look like? One, two, and what does it look like to go to other festivals? Because you just came back from Dubai, and I, 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 you know, graciously happened to know some of your, you know, forthcoming itineraries, itineraries, and the ones in the past. 
what does it you know what does it look like from a dramatological perspective curating programming festival or co-curated or co-programming festivals and then being part of other festivals that you were invited to be uh, and i and i know that and i know do not have something to say here too with your work with you know um with um uh, world um um uh, I'm, I'm going blank on that you will help united me united solo yeah united, united solo. solo thank you thank you <laughs> united solo yes yes exactly um, and, and hopefully, Princess also within the context of 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 of, of um, South Africa, if you if you're connected to any festival. But but let's go to you, Bukun. What 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 are your thoughts to that question? Okay. Um, in terms of producing festivals, um, okay, it starts with uh, first coming up with the theme. You know, the theme of the festival. You know, what what, what do we want the festival to to reflect? And then selecting uh, selecting fringe companies and selecting uh, curated companies. You know, so for Lagos Theatre Festival, uh, they are, they are, we, we we curate up to four performances that uh, you know that uh, that we, we are going to pay attention to. You know, so much attention to. Then we have other performances, fringe performances. So for fringe performances, I would say that my my influence as a producer and a coach, a dramaturg, you know, doesn't really have, uh, I don't really have so much influence on them because it's, it's their work anyway. So what I do is to try to just, uh, 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 try to uh, advise them on how to uh, perform this play into spaces. You know, so for example, we, we did Lagos State Art Festival in 2019 in Freedom Park. So we, we Freedom Park. So we had issues, not issues. So of course, if you're producing plays at that festival, you know, you know that you're constrained with space and you just have to do it in the space that you're giving that that, that you've been allocated to. So the thing that is, you know, we'll tell you, okay, which play are you doing? So to start with, if someone tells me that okay, he's doing Death and King Sosman, you know, you give him the summary of Death and King Sosman and everything, then. I look at the spaces, you know, you can suggest the space you want, but I look at the spaces, you know, based on uh, the timing and all those things, and I think, okay, this is the space that will be good for your performance, you know, so let's put it there. And then I give them explanation for why. So there was one thing that happened, one one big fringe producer came to me and said, you know, this, this, this space, I don't really like it that much. I don't think it can, it can work. So what I did there was, you know, to, so uh, he, he had to explain his performance to me. And because I love size-specific data, I love out of data, I decided, okay, this is what we are going to do. You know, we are, you know, we are going to tweak this, tweak the play this way. You know, don't let your actors enter like that, you know, because of audience style. You know, he wanted the whole thing to be proscenium style. And I told him, look at people are not in proscenium theatre. People are not indoors. Everybody's outdoor in this festival. So why don't you... Uh, why why don't you uh, make your play to just fit the outer style? So with that, uh, I, 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 I act as a dramaturg. Also for curated plays, you know, that we have, that as a festival we have been mentioned, you know, because we're paying them, of course, and there's ticket sharing. You know, so the, the, uh, for me, I, when, I, uh, when people submit entries for the festival, you know, I should please, which one, which stories do we want to do? To get to you know, and I don't want duplication of things and everything. So there was one there was one story I was very interested in. You know, the, the story about mental in illness. And during this time, you know, several people, you know, there have been issues of suicide, and, and I felt you know this this story is coming at the at, at the appropriate time. You know, so we uh, I attend the house, you know, this is what we can do. You know, this is okay. If you want to turn your audience, it's okay. How how do we make your this experience really good? So that people can come to your to your to, to, to see this show. And we tried as much as I tried as much as possible not to interfere in the creative process. Because I understand, because I've also been a director, I understand how it is when a director has uh, his own idea of how he wants his play to be. And also I've also been I'm a, I'm also a state manager. So I, I just advise <coughs> based on space, based on audience experience, because audience experience is core in anything you do, you know. You can, if the audience experience is not good, especially in festivals, nobody will come to see your shows and you need to make money. You know? So I, I, I decided to do that. And also, funny enough, there's one play, uh, I'm also managing a project in, 
internal culture at the moment, you know, out of theater. So I'm also curating that, uh, bringing smaller companies to curate play. So uh, after the pandemic, sorry, not after the pandemic, not during this pandemic, you know, we, we discovered that producing plays has been very difficult for companies. You know, in 2019, we had seven big shows happening, happening in, in, in Lagos, you know, everywhere. It, it even got to a point that theater artists, you know, it, it, was, it was about, you know, how much are you paying me? You know, this one is offering me better. So for, for, this, for this idea of out of theater, you know, we, I'm, uh, I'm more interested about how small, you know, how, what's the strength of your cast? How can we, how can you uh, adapt this play to suit out of space? Forget about procedure. You know, let's start decolonizing all these places. You know, let's not just start thinking about everything has to be procedure, procedure, procedure. And so far, audience have loved it. You know, before, when we first started, you know, people were all about, you know, this thing, that tell me to pay 5,000 to watch the play out, outside and everything. But every producer that I has come to stay their place there have, 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 been, have been successful in terms of box office and in terms of audience experience. You know, just audience experience has been good. And again, we are, we are, uh, we are redirecting the minds and the expectations of the audience into uh, other forms of theater. Because right now in Nigeria, uh, audience have been made to believe that proscenium theater is only a form of theater. You know, because we don't have lots of outdoor theaters, which is actually the African theater. So we are bringing that back to, to, to play. So that, that has, um, I think, you know, I don't know if I've answered the question that well, but no. that has been my function in terms of producing and dramaturging plays that come for, uh, on festivals. Yeah. No, thank you, because you've kind of given us, you know, different, you know, you're coming at it at this from different perspective, uh, perspectives rather, as someone who um, is uh, producing um, and also offering that uh, dramaturgical lens to and asking questions really to place that you're, you know, you're selecting that you're bringing um, and helping being that third eye. To say why why you why why are you choosing proscenium stage versus um, you know around theater why why are you that's a directorial choice but why did you choose it because we know that a dramaturg you know the main question the main role of a dramaturg is really to ask questions the why question why, why are you doing this so that you can you can be able to articulate or even if you cannot at least you have an understanding of what you're trying to do. So, so th thank you for thank you for offering that thought. Over to you, Donut. Um, I know your experience off Broadway with United Solo. Um, that will be it'll, it'll be something to hear your own thought to this question. Over to you. Um, thank you. Um, uh, and before I respond, let me just say earlier I said that um, me going to Uganda and not being sensitive to the culture would be like a white person coming to Africa. Um, I meant a non-African white person. I don't mean to pretend that white Africans don't exist. Um, for me, the institutionalization of dramaturgy has been interesting because it cuts across media. And I realized that when I was working on stage, um, there was much more an exchange of ideas in terms of uh, whether I was on Broadway or whether I was in Taiwan or wherever I was. Um, it, because theater lends itself to that collaborative process. Now with film, I found that um, the, the, there are silos, you know, of the executive decisions that I made here, and then this one here, and then the producers here. Um, and the way that that unfolded for me pragmatically, I'll just tell you a quick story, is the, the play that I told you about, uh, that was about the interracial marriage of our first president in Botswana in the 1940s um, to a British woman while we were still a British protectorate. I mean, that's why it was scandalous. Um, so I did that as a play um, off Broadway and I wrote it as a book, I did it as a documentary and I finally did it as a Hollywood film. Now the Hollywood film is where it got interesting in terms of dramaturgy because it meant that now it was being produced by this multi-million um, dollar billion dollar machine called Hollywood, an institution on its own. And it wanted to have a monopoly on how 
a story is told uh, for its own capitalist gain. And that's what Hollywood does. Um, so I found that a story that I had lived with at that point for a third of my life, I was 30 years old and I'd been doing it for 11 years, uh, a story that I had lived with for so long across continents to watch it get sort of taken apart uh, in the name of dramaturgy, bastardized in the name of dramaturgy, um, and always being uh, excused as the material being um, prepped for a global audience. That was an interesting experience. And I remember one of the decisions um, in a United Kingdom, that's the name of the film, uh, that were made was to remove Setswana, that uh, Setswana as a language was not going to be heard on the film. And I thought to myself, first of all, this whole drama of speaking to uh, your ethnic group and justifying your interracial marriage, whatever, all those things happened in Setswana. I know because I have the transcripts for my book. Um, so to watch that suddenly have to cross the linguistic barrier and have to make sense in English was disheartening for me um, as a Motswana. Um, because, you know, there's so much that English just fails to capture about Africans. And so even as I'm an African who writes in English about Africa, I'm very aware of the times when it just fails. Um, and so for me, that kind of experience of how we curated that story for a different medium for film and for a different audience, which is the global audience, with prospects of getting Oscars and all that. It became a much more um, problematically dramaturged um, story. Uh, and the unfortunate part of this is that Hollywood is such a huge institution that once they have told a certain story about a certain people, it's very difficult for those people to get their story back and tell it with their own voice. So, you know, similar to what Ibu Kung was saying earlier that institutions do control the voice of uh, how the story ends up being told. But in this case, um, I felt that it's not just the story being affected, it's a history of a people. I, it won't be in my child's generation that that's corrected. My child's generation has Hollywood as the authority on that story. And it's almost like what I did for 10 years before that film came, uh, came along does not matter because now it's been told by an institution that is so big. Um, and what I did and many other people did. Um, so I just wanted to point out like how, you know, um, when institutions get involved, they don't always have the uh, people's history at heart and um, they are just looking for profit. And those stories tend to be extremely um, colonialist in their way, in, in that sense, that they reaffirm the very tenets of colonialism. Um, yeah, I will stop here, but yeah, so that was my experience. <laughs> well, I'd love to hear more about um, about the, the uh, it, is it the one that was released in 2016? Yes, it is. Oh, okay, great. I'd love to hear more about that, which, which is interesting to think about um, the dramaturgy within the context of theater versus the context of film. Um, uh, and and the and the other forces, unseen forces that direct uh, how we tell stories, the question we ask, the audience we're serving, and things like that. Um, over to you, Princess. What's your thought um, uh, to to this question? Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot to take in. <laughs> it's wow. It's it's really great to hear. Um, I think I was. Um, I'll start with what Donna was speaking about, especially because, you know, I'm missioning into uh, the film world um, and I, I completely relate because my, my husband is a film director. So I've, um, you know, had the stories. He's ha also had the Hollywood opportunities where, you know, your, your work is just ripped apart, you know, in the name of, you know, uh, Hollywood standards. Um, However, I think when I think of uh, the National Arts Festival and um, uh, going virtual, right? Because I think theater going virtual sort of 
uh, brought about this interest for a lot of theater makers to explore, you know, this different medium of telling stories. And having worked with uh, the National Arts Festival and being exposed to so many different ways of, um, uh, you know, of just relaying a story um, from people from all over the world, right? Um, has been an eye opener for me in terms of already what's happening. Or though we are saying, you know, the process of decolonizing, I feel like it's already it's it's already been happening in in many ways, right? Um, and I think as a producer, um, you constantly trying to, or you always have to be aware of the changes that take place, or else you'll be left behind, right? Um, uh, there's a, a show that I produce, um, and we've done so for, for, for quite a while, Red Fermi Cycle, um, and it's a performance art piece, and we usually look for spaces that are unconventional, uh, that will allow the work to, to live in a different way. So we're performing it in galleries, we're performing it in if it's a theater, we, you know, in the changing rooms, dressing rooms of the theater, bringing in the audience, you know, in different uh, direction, just basically uh, breaking the rules. Um, and I feel for me as a producer, this is where uh, it becomes so important to, like I'm saying, being aware of the transformation as we going through them, because this informs the work in a different way. This is why when you continuously going back to work, you know, going back to the work, because that's the beauty with theater and what makes it different from film, you know, uh, is that you there's opportunity to continuously revisit the story and how it's told in different places for different people uh, in a different time, you know. Um, uh, for me, this is where um, the decolonizing process may, you know, I feel that's where we should not touch, you know, that process of revisiting a work and what it means in a different time. And I say that as a director directing, you know, a play by Zixin Gao many years before I was born. Um, um, it holds that history, which is where I feel the people who, who are, well, as a producer, working with an artist, this is where I have to place a certain type of respect of how each time do I, you know, revisit the work and, and to ensure that, you know, it lives on. Um, so as, uh, um, you know, we're touching about the space uh, and I've been very passionate about space for many years for this particular reason, that if we do not have a place where artists can lay to ground, you know, what needs to be heard, then where? And even that decolonizing the structures, you know, that uh, um, uh, have been placed where it's the only place where you can hear the theater, you know, is also problematic. You know, for me, it just doesn't go it's, it's not only about how a dramaturg, you know, engages with the work, but it's also about how do we decolonize the spaces where the works get seen? How do we uh, decolonize how we're supposed to tell our stories um, as, as Africans, you know? Um, for me, it all works hand in hand, you know? Um, um, and I mentioned the National Arts Festival, particularly because it's a curation of now, the structure that you used to know has to be changed, you know, so you are forced into breaking it, uh, whether you wanted to or not. And there we discovered beautiful stories where people went beyond what they were used to. I mean, the, the play or, or rather the film that won the gold ovation was uh, um, called The Shack, where this guy just took his camera and recorded the thoughts of a shack. Um, where else would you see that, you know, uh, um, except in, in maybe Africa, where people would then relate to those stories, and those are the stories we want to hear, you know, so for me, just having uh, various platforms where, where we can engage with the stories is so important in how uh, um, we continue with uh, um, the history of us as Africans. Interesting. Um, I'd love to go to the question around space, but we don't have time because I want us to spend time on decolonized dramaturgy. 
But I also want to say that, you know, the question of space in the, in the context of Lukao, the question, and its context of having a physical space can be an interesting conversation, especially because of the administrative and managerial responsibility of having a space itself, right? A lot of theaters cannot even, have not been able to survive, wouldn't, wouldn't have survived um, if they had their physical space. So for example, my own theater, theater company, Theater Mission International in Nigeria, when I started, we didn't even have money to have a space. And we've never, we have space that sort of like, you know, administrative and all that. But our work has always been from one place to another. We're very nomad in our practice, in our function. And even when we think about theater from a from a, an African perspective, it's not about the space itself because every space you get to, your performance claims that space. You know, the market space, the market itself, like Ibukun was saying, the market theater, uh, you know, the community theater, the, the market is not their space, right, uh, from, from a, that standpoint. But when they get to that community, that particular place, they claim it for their performance. So it's kind of interesting to hear how the idea of space, you know, speak to dramaturgy and how the stories are being told and the kind of stories that are being told and the audience that are coming to it and how the practice, uh, the, the, the space itself inform so many layers and levels of the theater itself. Uh, time won't permit us to go into space, but, but I'd like to just kind of dive in where we're, we're, I've checked in with Brandon. We don't have questions from our viewers yet. Um, hopefully we do. Uh, but I'd like to ask the question and for three of you to weigh into this, why decolonize dramaturgy or what, what, what do you think this idea of decolonizing dramaturgy, what do you think, um, what ideas do you think this is opening us to, to talk about or giving us platform to engage? Maybe I can ask Donna to, to, take, to take that first and we'll go to uh, Ibukon and then we'll go to uh, Princess. Over to you, Donna. Um, I think we need to decolonize everything, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, because colonialism was bad, but 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 you know, jokes aside, I think that our understanding of theater, as you know, Ibuku pointed out about how the proscenium is privileged over our own way of performing outdoors and sites specifically and whatnot, not, um, is that the way we practice theater as Africans is still very much colonial, meaning that it excludes a lot of people. Um, and it excludes a lot of African narratives as well. It excludes almost the core parts of us. And I realized that um, when I look at the way that we practice theater in Botswana, for example, a lot of it is geared towards the tourist market. Who is the tourist in Botswana? Who is this European coming to gawk at animals and see us dancing in animal skin. Those kind of very reductive expectations of theater are what characterize theater in Botswana, that it has to be pleasing to the tourist. Um, so I really push against that. And I see it as a colonial understanding of what theater can do in my home. So I push against it and I think that's why decolonization can do. It can actually put people who look like me and who are sensible and intelligent and black in theater. Um, one of the things that I, I had to talk, because you were touching a bit on space, that I had to think about a little differently as I grow as a person um, was maybe, the, well, my head space, not really the space <laughs> in the literal sense, that um, I got the opportunity to work, uh, to teach at a school in India uh, that was a school for children with disabilities. Now, most of the students were there because they were deaf, but it, it was a very mixed uh, school in terms of disabilities, which of course is a terrible challenge. Um, and I came back from that experience um, and I had already premiered that Ugandan play off Broadway. I changed it and rewrote it into a sign language play. So when I performed it in 2013 at United Solo, it was a sign language. So I was performing the whole thing through sign. Um, and it was because of how my whole mind space had changed. And now as I work with United Solo for next year, I'm realizing that in my work, uh, dramaturgically, I've been excluding 
probably because I'm a product of colonialism myself, but I've been excluding queer narratives from my work uh, and pretending that, um, you know, there aren't uh, queer characters in history. So I am going into that space as well to see now how dramaturgy can catch up with our moralities, our times, um, and what we demand of our, of our own humanity, you know. Um, so I will see how that goes. Um, it's an experiment in my own humanity and also in my work. Um, and if I do it well, maybe um, maybe Ibu Kun will invite me to Dubai and uh, Princess will invite me to, to come and do a film also. <laughs> <laughs> o over to it's you. Done. Over to it's, done, it's done, It's <laughs> done, okay. okay. Okay, so um, I think I, I I have the problem with uh, the word dramaturge and with, with, with the word dramaturge and, and what institutions have made them to, to be, you know. So, and, and I feel really like, like what Donna said, we need to decolonize everything, you know, just, you know, and, and the moment we decolonize everything, then we start finding our truth. You know, okay, for example, um, and well, and, and again, I have, I have issues with when uh, a, a, a dramaturg comes to me and tells me, okay, this is how it must be done. You know, for example, uh, when, um, when we went to UK to perform a play, um, there, was, there was someone, you know, from the institution, you know, from, from an institution in UK, you know, that told us, you know, this, 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 this. This is how the audience would like the play because we are bringing it to another uh, country. And, and, and then, just, know, to, just to I, clarify, and that would be the uh, an institutional drama talk for that particular. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. An institutional drama talk. You know, this, this, and this is what you can do. You know, to make audience enjoy the play because we are in England, and this is what they will love and everything. So I um, the. Uh, we, we had some conversations, you know, and, and, the, and the director decided, look at, I'm not going to, I'm just going to have fun, you know, my, my, uh, I'm, I'm going to let this play just be like that, you know, whether you like it or not, you know, let's see how it goes. And we discovered that the audience loved it, you know, they were not even, you know, and, and you know, then, then we start, but then at that point, we start finding fault with our institutions trained dramaturgs, you know, and, and, and the, and the, uh, and and what uh, I would like and the code I, I don't know the right word now in, in, uh, the code of conduct you know that dramaturgs uh, have, have to follow and everything you know because and, and again I've I've had to also in, in my works I've had to uh, have this battle internal battle with dramaturgic plays especially when it goes to another space or something because I remember one performance that I that I directed that's home about. Uh, about migration and about uh, and about identity, migration identity, and what it means to to be a black in a white man's country, and what it means to be a black in a black man's country. You know, the, the the dilemma. You know, when we did it in Nigeria, of course, it's a one woman play, and it was written by Genevieve, uh, that's a fantastic uh, actor. Uh, she. It was our own story, so we were I was practically telling now, so we are going through, you know, editing, editing, because she's, <laughs> the actor is a dramaturg at that point in time, because it's our own story. So when, when we stayed it at Lagos, when it was well accepted, but we had some issues, we wanted to take it to, take it to, uh, uh, to, to South Africa, to, to perform at the Christian Festival. You know, so we started looking at the, what is the concept of uh, migration, what's the concept of greener pastures to South Africa? You know, what's the concept of and being what 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 does it feel like to be black in South Africa? What does it feel like to be, you know, so you know, just to make the audience appreciate the play more, even though it's a it's 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 a story that has been told. Right? It's 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 a personal story of the actor uh, herself. You know, so uh, I discovered that the audience in a way so although they loved it, but they didn't love the originality of it. So and when we were taking for that back recently, you know, we, I was having discussions with some of the actors, and we're like, okay, you know, we took the uh, fellow to South Africa. When, when we took the to South Africa, you know, you had to change it, you know, to suit the South Africans. And someone said something. Look at it, Chinese. We always speak Chinese. Chinese. We always speak Chinese to you. You know, they will never change it. You know, so why? 
must we why must we uh, always always defer to the Westerners? You know, why must we always want to let them understand us? You know, why must English be in the mode of communication for everybody? You know, why why must you do place of certain ways? You know? So we decided, okay, let's make this thing PG. You know, treat treat PG English. Um, with additions of uh, Yoruban, I mean, with additions of Yoruba, uh, um, English, you know, and the audience loved it. So again, the, the the question of what is the concept of dramaturgy, and we, again, you know, I again, uh, well, I was writing something. You know, I think there, to me, I think there is audience dramaturgy and institution dramaturgy. You know, and when I look at both, I feel audience dramaturgy is, is, is much as as a lot to, to, to uh, as, as a lot because then you have to start thinking, okay, what do they love? And is it if 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 they would love this, do you think they would love it, or are you thinking for the audience? And yeah, and and, and again, I used to say something that it is what you give the audience to take. You know, if you don't. If you give them rice, they will eat rice. You can't give so uh, you, you you determine what the audience will, will, will accept. So again, you know there can be there, there's a need to start uh, decolonizing what the Western Western people have 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 have, have, uh, have made to uh, there's a need to decolonize the concept of Western of the the, the concept of decolonize uh, the concept of dramaturgy in in Western world because. I, I can't imagine you know, someone that is learning dramaturgy in, 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 in university you know, and, and they're just telling him about just the Western style of theatre, then he thinks he, can, he, 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 has, he, he has all the authority to, 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 to dramaturgy and African play. It's not even possible. In fact, even in African play, let me know if you use Africa. If you're you working, if you're Nigerian and you're working on a Nigerian play and the play is uh, culture specific. So far, you are Igbo doesn't mean you know a lot about Yoruba. In fact, even if you are a Yoruba man, there are still some cultures you don't know about that you need to 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 research on. That you need at every stage there are people you need to meet. And this person might just be this might just be someone walking on the street, might be an old man, might be anybody. Interesting. Yeah, thank you. Th th thank you, Bukun. You've touched on so many things that uh, time won't permit us to unpack them. Um, but very interesting to to for, you know your last point about um, understanding our cultural boundaries and 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 knowing that even for me as a Yoruba person, I can't say I want to dramaturg uh, uh, you know an Igbo an Igbo play. <laughs> it's not gonna work, right? And knowing that that's the same thing that culture specific. And things like that. Um, please, we have to be careful. And 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 also for you and Donut, you also touched on the idea of the the idea of always taking you know what is given to us as a standard. The Greek theater is the standard. Who says that, <laughs> right? Who says that, right? Um, you know, thanks to Brett that came to to debunk that idea that you know you know his episodic theater is a theater too our own theater you know in our own theater performance tradition they are theater in their own right right so that idea of debunking those 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 standards that has been that have been handed over to us we need to start thinking carefully about that i'd like to uh, give the floor to uh, to princess um to to share her thoughts about this question on why why decolonize uh, dramaturgy over to you princess um yeah i think um for me it's it's really about rediscovering um and the process towards that in a way requires you to to strip off <laughs> things that you know have been drilled into your head um um from wherever i think it starts you know, with the teachings of what are we being taught, you know, um, um, for me, even, you know, going uh, and completing my degree and, you know, there's, there's a whole disconnect of trying to catch up, especially in South Africa, you know, because um, going through, we went through a phase where, you know, a particular history was being told 
including in the arts, you know, and it took a while to introduce what actually are the stories that uh, uh, um, my people, you know, left for me. Um, so for me, it starts there, you know, how do we actually change, you know, what is being taught? And then from there, how do you actually change the industry in terms of the work that is accepted? Which is why I refer to spaces, because for me, that was my initial engagement or my first engagement with the professional uh, uh, world of theater is that in order for your work to be seen, you had to be in those spaces that you know were colonized and we know of uh, theaters which are restricting in terms of what you're going to tell. So that for me already was problematic that if I if for this space to accept me, I have to be telling this type of work. you understand so, which is why the questioning of, then why am I going to that space that does not allow me to tell something else? So where else can I tell, you know, this work? Maybe I can do it in my garage. Okay, uh, what does that mean? What am I actually missing out, you know, uh, um, excluding from the work that may be crucial that you'll get in, in you know, in the, in the commercial spaces, in the market theater, what have you. Um, for me, uh, not well, I don't want to say nothing, but uh, when you weigh it up, you know, having one light is okay if I get to make sure my story is told, you know, uh, and I feel that, you know, these structures may sell a, a particular way, a, a, a colonized way of how we tell our stories. So, hence I'm saying that decolonizing, I'm, I'm repeating what has been sold, that it starts with everything. It's what I'm being taught at school. Uh, if it's, it's, it's unfortunate for me to discover a Zeke Simda play only towards my fourth year. You understand? And Bracht is first year and, you know, I'm interrogating that script and the structure and, you know, already it's drilled in me. The dramaturgy, before I even meet the person, is already there. I need to understand this world you know, uh, uh, of this playwright. Um, although it is uh, just as important because they hold a history. So for me, uh, the reason why I say we need to drop and rediscover is because we've, we've left out so much of ourselves because we're so used to being told how to think. We're so used to, you know, this is the way that things are being done. Like you're saying, by whom, you know? Why is it that Greek theater has to be the first thing that I learn about? You know what I mean? Because someone else has said, this is the standard. This has been here for so long. But that's because our stories have been erased. It's not that we haven't been telling those stories. They, we can't find them. So in order to find them, you have to drop everything and take what is available now to ensure that at least that voice is heard, uh, uh, regardless of how it is. That script that is written by Donald, you know, needs to be heard. Because if it wasn't heard, then it wouldn't have toured as much as it did. You, you know what I mean? So for me, absolutely, it's let's just get into it uh, and stop trying to uh, define it by all terms. We need to redefine it according to our terms. Oh, amazing. Thank you, Princess. You kind of, you kind of, you know, Thank you for also bringing more nuance to the idea of space, so that it's not just physical space. You're talking space from from a different perspective, and and thank mm. you for that. Um, you you've kind of touched on on really key things here, the three of you. The need for us to 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 we have to rediscover ourselves as a people that we're enough. <laughs> right mm -hmm. that we don't have to be we don't have to be told what to do because that's the standard we you know the merit shouldn't be their merit should be our merit should be our terms all right and those are those are critical ideas that was kind of touched on you know in all the four, four episodes i know we have four more minutes to to come to bring this this to an end and we don't have questions so far um we've asked folks if there are questions please pass it across we'll be happy to answer them <laughs> But I just want to say thank you to, to, the four, to the three of you for taking the time to, to, to share the space with me today. It's been an interesting web series, I have to say, uh, putting it together because I had to really ask myself some of these questions, my, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, what does it mean? Right. Um, and then looking into those to invite to speak to this. 
Um, and also knowing that the idea of decolonization can be contentious depending on who is talking about it, where you're talking about it, um, and, and different things like that. Um, to, to our viewers out there, I want to say thank you for being part of, of the journey with us. Um, we have four series before now. So if you want to take you know, an overview of all of them, they are available on HowlRound um, website and you can have access to watch them later on. Um, you can refer to them in your classes for those that are teaching. If you find any of these things useful, I think all of them are open source so you can um, um, uh, come, um, come on license, I believe. Um, so you can you can refer to them and all of that. Um, I also want to thank you know Howard for taking the time to be on this journey with us. Uh, thanks to to our interpreter uh, Jay uh, and Ty who is here today, um, and of course Sarika has been one of our interpreters also that has been with us. And to our captioners, thank you so much. And to to all our partners. Um, Pan-African Creative Exchange, thank you for taking, being on the journey with us to Safe World. Thank you so much to Tete Mishri, thank you so much. And of course, to the University of China, uh, thank you so much. Um, maybe to end today, um, maybe before I do my final spiel, idea last thought from three of you, you know, in, th in 30 seconds that you just want to drop as we, as we bring this to an end, maybe to wrap up your thoughts. Um, and we can, uh, we can just just go boom 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 just go quickly three of you um uh, we can start with um with ibukon and then to princess and then end on donut you have to meet yourself ibukon okay um uh, funny enough I, i'm not really thinking of something now but, but i feel you know that there is a need for africans to start owning their own space in terms of dramaturgy yeah, and 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 uh, and as the need for us to start the, the constructing writing about our stories and not always uh, and, and not always be subjected to what the Western has always given us, you know. As as, as, as thank you. I, I don't, as, yeah, thank you, uh, Princess. Uh, I think I'm gonna. What I'm leaving with is is your words, Tyro, that we are enough. I think. Um, we are enough to to continue. We are enough, you know, to 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 share our stories. So I think for me, that's my biggest take take home take home with me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, Princess uh, Donut. Um, I am really grateful um, to learn um, from Princess and Ibuku. And I think anyone watching us who wants to do what we do is that don't be fearful to write the way we speak even if it's english right, right the way we speak it and then the structure don't be afraid to structure it after our folk tales that's what i do forget the whole three act mm. structure thing do it the way your grandmother tells a story yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> thanks <Donna. laughs> very 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 radical um, um no really thank you so much for taking the time today um my name is taiwa falabi and i've been really a, a privileged to curate this um I'm really excited that um, all the all the um, the guests that we brought on this episode on this series from episode one to episode uh, the fifth episode you can always google their name contact them if you want information about them please feel free to reach out to me if you can reach out to them I think they are they are available anytime and uh, their contact are out there but um, just wanted to say that it's really been a privilege um, like I did mention at the beginning I'm a Canada researcher in uh, socially engaged theater and the director of a center for socially engaged theater and an assistant mm -hmm. professor at the University of uh, Regina. And um, uh, I started my own theater company back in Nigeria, Theater Emission International is thriving. And so it's an opportunity to bring all of these connections to my work and to be able to share space with these lovely folks today. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks to Brendan that has been there, uh, my co-producer from Safe World. Thanks to Taiwo and Jay. And of course, thank you to all our viewers and um, Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, thank you to you, Taiwo. Well thank done. You this so is much, awesome. Taiwo. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> this is great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye.